le régime. Bank of the 90s. I, I coined that notorious phrase in the first issue of the Prague Post. It rang out like a clarion call across the ocean even. People in, all the way from Nova Scotia to the, to the Golden Gate started packing their bags and, and coming here. They were searchers, searchers and lost souls. Uh, it sometimes seemed to me as if half of Santa Barbara or Sacramento was in Prague because they had uh, migrated west over the generations and now there was nowhere to go but east, either to the far east or in this direction to Eastern Europe. I love Prague. I just love it here. It's the most beautiful place I've ever been. Amazingly gorgeous. And there's an energy here that is not like any place I've ever been before. I mean, not Berkeley, not New York. I mean, certainly not Los Angeles, where I'm from, where it's all about, it's like silicon tits and whoring yourself to the movie industry. Well, what happens is the expatriated individual, regardless of his reasons for leaving his home country, experiences a type of romance with a host culture in the initial stages. It's it's almost like a honeymoon where everything that happens in the host culture is viewed by the individual as an adventure and through loving eyes. Um, he begins to identify uh, with the host culture and idolize it. Nadraji! And all of us artists in Prague, we just feel like we're being swept up in this amazing like cultural and artistic renaissance and Prague is like a magnet just pulling talented people from all over the globe into her orbit. Question. Answer. Sex. What? Expatriates, uh, uh, journalists, uh, lost souls, wheeler dealers, entrepreneurs, everybody. Recent college graduates in particular, they came here instead looking for something better. But there were also people already a little launched in their careers with accounting firms or law firms who wanted to get off the treadmill, the treadmill of bucking for a partnership at age 35 by working 128 hours and getting prematurely bald. Well, I've always known how to make money. I mean, I don't know why. It's my greatest gift. <laughs> and I'd have to say, other than Ivana Trump, uh, my greatest inspiration has always been Peggy. Oh, Guggenheim. I mean, the things she did for the creative world. I mean, that is what excites me about being here. I want to find the new Jackson Pollocks, the Rod McEwens, you know, the new Becketts. Give them a chance to show their work and find their voice. And I've devised a plan to make some real money. It's a brilliant idea for this market. I went to the Czech Kmart and immediately upon entering, I noticed how disorganized the store was. I mean, things like the nail files were in hardware. And the condoms, I just happened to notice, were in the meat department. So immediately I signaled for customer service support and finally out came this Czech woman with a very serious face. And I smiled and politely said, may I speak with the manager, please? And she growls at me and says, and I realized she didn't speak a word of English, not one word. So I tried to be extra helpful and I motioned with my body, where is the manager? I need the manager. The manager, where, the guy who And she says to me, Nibim, Nibim! Which I later find out means, thank you. I don't know. Okay, this is customer service and she doesn't know where the manager is? Or how to speak a word of English? And that's when it hit me. These people have no idea how to run a customer-friendly business. 
And ironically, that very morning, I'd been reading in a Czech guidebook about Prague, about how in the late 1960s, they had this thing here called socialism with a human face. And it was a kind of communism, but a friendlier kind, you know, where they could dance, they could listen to any music they wanted to, they could even travel. Anyway, so there I was in the Czech Kmart, and these words popped into my head. Czech business with an American face. Chabaf, a consultancy firm. I mean, it was a stroke of genius on my part. I can't reveal anything else at this point. It's Chabaf. Cut, flash forward, go, break, break, cool! A bright gash of light bounces like misty gorillas along the banks of a fecund gorge. And I saw her standing there. Thank you. I once wrote a seven stanza poem on beer coasters at a pub around the corner from here called uh, Ucerneho Vola. It took me nine hours and 11 beers to get it right, but I did it, because that's what I do. I write. Any opportunity I have, any chance I get to write, I write. See, you never know when you're gonna get the mojo. That's what we here in the community call it, the mojo. It may only come around once and you gotta get it down on paper or, or it's lost, it's gone. It just disappears into, into thin air like a, like a melodious vapor. It's a bird, then gone. Had to get that one down. That's where the discipline comes in. I believe you and I first got acquainted uh, one evening when I was uh, working. Uh, doing some of my work at Beef Stew, a little poetry slam we get together for. And uh, she came up to me and said I would, uh, she was very impressed with my work and was interested in maybe producing some plays here in town. And That's so not the way I remember it. No, I mean, I was at Beef Stew, but I, I didn't even know you. You came up to me and asked, you said you had a play you'd written and that you wanted me to produce it. Well, no, okay, we talked went. about your play. I agree with that. We talked about his play, and his play is, I, it is very good. It's called uh, Day on Tonight, and um, it's brilliant, actually. It's very uh, O'Neillian, I think, like like Eugene O'Neill. But it really is about my story, my life growing mm -hmm. up in Brooklyn. Uh, I in thought New you Jersey. grew up in New Jersey. Well, I did. I moved around a lot. Mm -hmm. It's universal. I mean, this could be this this could be take place in, in anywhere in the world. But basically, it deals with the the whole web of 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 of, of uh, just what, what what people have to deal with uh, young kids and their no. It's family. good. You know, it's a little bit male intense. oriented for me, but it's it's well, I'm good. I'm a guy. You know, it has something to do with that. Maybe you could bring in a sister character or something that's stronger. Um, yeah, but uh, my sister's a pain in the ass anyway. I really don't want to deal with her. Um, well, Yule and Tom came to me with Tom's play, A Day and Tonight. They were looking for a producer. <laughs> so I read the play, and I really, really liked it. So we ambitiously booked a theater for a 27 performance run. Oh yeah, we have a name now, and we're also very excited about this. The name was derived through this really intense um, Hegelian dialectical process. Look guys, if we're gonna do this thing, if we're going to pioneer a new movement in theater, if we're going to break down artist conventions wait, and break wait, wait, down wait, the barrier... that's it. The Groundbreakers. That's the name of our theater company. The Groundbreakers. Look, we got to brand ourselves, man. we got to call ourselves something. Yeah, the Dottists oh. had a name. They were the Dottists. The, the Romantic people were the Romanis, Romantics. The real people were, were real, man. What about us? What do we got? What are we? Personally, as a writer, I want to destroy the language. The Destroyers. We could call ourselves the Destroyers. The non-puppeteers. Um, Hegel, you know, he was a um, philosopher, a German philosopher, and I think that his philosophy really speaks to the history we are now living because he talked about thesis and antithesis, and you put them together and you get a new thesis. I really don't think we should push this this, this puppet thing, all right? And I also don't think we should uh, push this physical artist thing. What either. is that supposed to mean? It's, you know, it's this blatant prejudice against my craft that is why I left North America. I'm a physical artist. I use my body much like a Barishnikov or Isadora Duncan. Some of my work has been compared to what Al Pacino did with his body in Raging Bull. There's a respect in Bohemia for artistry. And not just for the writer, but for the physical artist as well. 
the acrobat, the tightrope walker. In Europe, the mime can breathe and grow. Czechs love a mime. Okay, Yul, you know what? Why don't we call ourselves the a mime and puppet hour and just watch the people line up? You know what? I don't need this shit. Wait, oh, Ian, it's cat. For God's sake, just call it black box. And I just thought, you know, it's black, it's so dark, you know, and they've had a lot of darkness here under communism, and we're bringing the new light. So when you put those things together, you get white box. White box theater, you know, because Vaclav Havel says we're living in truth. And um, so this theater company is like um, a, a box of truth and light. Deaky. I don't work. I feel like that would be a, a distraction I can't afford. I'm very disciplined. See, there are a lot of writers here, but they don't really write. See, they're not disciplined. I had a plan when I came out here. All right? I worked hard in New York in publishing. I uh, saved a bit of money. My grandma died and gave me a, a little bit of money, but I didn't blow it on uh, Broadway shows and, and, and TVs and stuff like that. I came out here, I had a plan. And I saved it up so I could write. See, that's one thing some people here in the community don't understand. You know, Sometimes I'll say, hey, uh, let's get together and go over that poem of mine I gave you. And they say, you know what, Thomas? I gotta go teach English. I don't get it. Here, theater is actually valued. I mean, it actually has power and meaning. I mean, it was the theater artists that overthrew 40 years of hegemonic communist reign and started the Velvet Revolution. Here, the president is a playwright. I mean, can you imagine that happening in the States? I don't think so. I think that this is going to be a really symbiotic time between Czechoslovak and American artists. We're learning so much from each other. We both agree that we need really good actors, so um, we're going to go straight to the source. Um, sorry, are you um, Martin Dejdar? Dejdar. Dejdar. I don't know. I don't know him. Sorry. Anyway, um, look, my, my name's Yule. Uh, I'm an American director. I live here in Prague. Oh, and I'm an American I'm, director. I, yeah, and I'm yeah. doing this really interesting new play, and I'm looking for actors. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be a really good opportunity for you guys to work with Americans after all these years of having your freedom stifled by communists, Russians, and fascists. Mm -hmm. And I heard that this Martin, um, what's Dejdar. Dejdar. Dejdar is really good Czech actor, and that he works here. Uh, I don't know. I don't know him. Sorry. No? I do. I no. do. I, He's, uh, I think he's awful. Really? Um, oh, well, uh, do you yeah, want to come? Do you have a script? Yeah, um, but, but it will not with me. I only have one copy. Um, so I'm going to have an audition tomorrow. Audition, yeah. you know, audition? Concourse. Concourse. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be at U Madvaku. And you, what is it's a, a pub. 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 You what do you call Madvaku. it? Hus Hus <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Umudvuku, vole. Bye bye Hollywood. No, tak. Můžeme tam jít, vej? nevypadá špatně. No nic, no. bye bye Hollywood. Bye bye Hollywood. Bye bye. OK, enter Mrs. Connors, please. Toby, we love you. Why do you insist on hurting us so? Um, okay, let's stop here. Ian, do you think you could try uh, saying the lines instead of miming them? I mean, they are written. I, I don't think my character would say this stuff verbally. I think he would express it physically. Tom, you're the writer. What do you think? Uh, Ian, uh, why don't you just try it once with the lines? Just to see what it's like. What do you think, you? Ian, let's try them. Okay. Uh, let's start again, folks, from the top, please. Uh, 
Well, I am proud to say that Uzlati Kotva is the first client of my new consultancy firm, Chabath. And in Czech, Uzlati Kotva means the golden anchor, so we've used that name to create a fun and sea swashbuckling, salty, piratey, full dining experience. <laughs> well, the owner wanted an American feel. And I thought about that and I asked myself, just what exactly is an American feel? And poof, came to me, good food, good fun, and good customer friendly service. So we've had some training courses for the staff on how to smile and be very friendly. And it's really important, you know, it's really, really worked. This is our, one of our new waiters, Radek. Radek, uh, can you say your line? Hello, my name is Radek. I will be a waiter. Uh, what did we learn in our seminars? To smile and be friendly. You want to try it again? With the patch? Yeah. Hello, my name is Radek. I will be your waiter. Well, that was much better. But you still need a little bit of work. You can practice at home. Uh -huh. You can go back to work now. Yeah. Well, I'm proud to say that the Golden Anchor is the first theme bar in Prague. We have really improved the place. Excuse me. There you go. Excuse me, but you didn't to pay for gulas. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're with Lucy. Yeah, Redick, oh, they're on the Chabath account. They can eat, drink, here whenever they want. Yeah, but what about tape? Yeah. Well, listen, man, uh, I'm broke, <laughs> right? And uh, he's, a, he's a physical artist, so I don't know what to tell you. Um. We'll have to work that out. Action, Mr. Connors. I tell you, he's no good. That boy will never amount to anything. Um, you have one more line, Mr. Connors? Oh, that's right. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, uh, right here. Uh, Go get me a drink. Okay, very good. Uh, we'll break for lunch and uh, do the bar scene when we get back. Thanks, man. Fantastic, it's very lifelike, really. You are Toby? <laughs> no, Thomas. <laughs> Toby's a character from the play. Look, if, if you ever want to talk about the play sometime or, or the characters, I'm available anytime. Maybe after. Okay, all right. There was a natural synergy between Czechs and Americans. You know, I find that Czechs are very friendly people. See, they, they don't get hung up on superficial things like your job or your salary or what kind of car you drive. You know? I mean, they're, they're very helpful. They, they're, they're interested in you for you. Hi. Hi. Oh, I must have dropped this. Are you from America? Yes. Yes, I am. Hi. I'm Yana. Hi, Yana. I'm Thomas. Can I see? I have never met more friendly people in my life. More Czechoslovakia. Uh, this is Yana. My new little lady. This is Yana, my new little lady. Hello. <laughs> Here we go, Yana. Okay. Yes, I am American. Oh. He's a good poet. I like his nice black hair. <laughs> he wrote a very nice poem dedicated <laughs> to me. She didn't speak English. Well, it seems that in many cases, the Czech female may have been interested in the passport and money-making potential of the expatriate male whereas the expatriate male's interests were even more transparent. These cross-fertilizations 
uh, between Czechs and expatriates more often involved an American male and a Czech female. In fact, according to my research, this happened 87% of the time. The converse, i.e. an expatriate female and a Czech male, only occurred 12% of the time, the other 1% being other. This is Ian. He is my co-worker. He's a physical artist, and he'll be translating with his body for a more clear communication. Okay, so let's begin. Remember, always be on time. It's very important. And no smoking. It's stinky and it's very offensive. Co říkala, že nemáme kouřit nebo co? Uh, premises, if you have a question, just ask me directly in English. Okay? Super. And most importantly, learn to communicate clearly and effectively. Yeah? Oh, that's okay. So let's go ahead and write those down. Okay, so listen and repeat after me. Profit margin. Profit Downsize. Downsize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But we have to let you go. But we have to let you go. You're fired. You are fired. Super. Super. Clear your mind. Let yourself go. Find your center. What do you say? I don't have a problem. It's always better than being in work. Um, yes, you can change. So let's go ahead and try that. I can do it. Yes, I can. 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 I can do it. I can do it. Yes, I can. 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 They were they were uh, Czech American uh, uh, couples. The guy usually was getting away from a, a deteriorating relationship in uh, in the states, but then they they came here, and of course they found the women welcoming and available and friendly, and uh, uh, much more obliging than American women. I'm gonna write a poem about you someday. Okay, thank God. I have some notes for you. Can I meet you out there, please? Tom. What? You know there's a word for that where we come from. It's called sexual harassment. What? She threw herself at me. Yeah, so it's your job to resist. You're the one with the benefit of a liberal education. I, I, personally, I don't see the problem in kissing somebody. <laughs> Hello? You're in a position of power over her. We're, we're supposed to be exchanging ideas with these people, not saliva. I mean, it's our mission to educate and set an example, not exploit them. Exploit them? Hey, she's the one who's exploiting me, okay? Tom, you know you can't answer to this. Well, and I thought that the fact that the play was so strongly American could really be marketed to our benefit. Damn Mexican wetbacks never do anything right. The worst part is they don't speak English. Toby, time to go boxing now. Well, I consider it to be a success. I mean, it is true we had to close after four performances, but no one wanted to come. I think that had more to do with location, really. Talk about life, and we would drink all night. Watch the sun coming up over land nowhere. Everything it seems so right, but then you you wake up at 2:30 every fucking day. You waste your time hungover, but it doesn't matter anyway. You say, hey, maybe I'll paint a picture, or maybe I'll write my thoughts down. But then you see the price on the lease deck, and I got beer for just 12 crowns. You up? Maybe I'll just have another 
maybe some Becker too. The next thing you know, you're drunk again, and everybody's laughing at you. Hey, it just don't matter anymore. I said, just what you came here looking for. And if you can't find it over there, don't come here thinking somebody give it to you here. What is this rage that hangs on me? It is she. My knuckles scuttle across her cobblestone road. My blood mixes with her generations, dead, forgotten. This mistress, this weary town, here I've been played into oblivion, danced a thousand nights in her wooden tables, lost all, left all. This crone. This old crone. Where is the one? Who is the one who can deliver us from this old crone? In the 1970s, after I'd been expelled from here, I still had a premonition that I was going to die in Prague. And as it receded behind the mist of the Iron Curtain, I didn't know how. And I used to dream these far out schemes like I had my Viennese health insurance had medevac. When I got to be 98 or so and was ready to die, they would send a, a, a medevac plane over Prague with me on my deathbed with or without a parachute and drop me on to Prague. And that was the only way I saw that I was going to fulfill my destiny of dying here. The city has changed. The city center has become a hostile place for physical artists. Just last week, a clown was attacked on Charles Bridge, and his horn and squirt gun thrown into the river. The violence usually starts with the foreign element. Drunk Germans really take pleasure in chasing a mime around Old Town Square. And English football fans also love to taunt and persecute the mime. You go on, do it! You get that one, I'll get this one! Oh. Recently, pub owners have started openly discriminating against physical artists. Shaggy Mimi! Shaggy! And I've also had trouble with the handicapped and elderly. Mike, money. It's my new place. Pretty great. A group of us have moved into a single building out in Prague 9. It's a self-imposed ghetto. We've been forced to live there for our own safety. Have you gone to the police for protection? No. The police are an integral part of the conspiracy to marginalize the mime. Have you thought about leaving? Yes, I am leaving. When? Soon. Very soon. When I go, everyone in Prague will know I'm gone. What happened to your hair? Uh, it fell out. Well, he had a book of poetry published. You want to buy a copy? It's only a hundred crown. Oh, it, it was something to do with what he calls the one. I mean, it was complete nonsense to me, but, you know, I, he's an artist, so... You see, the one is uh, sort of a cross between uh, Moses and Daniel Boone. 
It's a, sort of a metaphor uh, for the pilgrim deliverer who can find a way out of Prague. Like, it's all in here. It's only 25 crowns. How about a beer? Yule? Well, she's had a hard time. Uh, you know, she lost her little white box theater. She didn't lose white box. She's been forbidden by Samuel French from ever directing one of their plays again. We wanted to do a postmodernist deconstructionist production. We were doing a production of Waiting for Godot. Ian was in it. What character did you play, Ian? Godot. It was going to be the first production of Waiting for Godot ever in which Godot arrived. Oh, well, it was some kind of French musical, you know. Uh, at the time, I thought, great, Les Mis. At a one, and a two, at a one, two, three, go. I'm Godot, I've come at last. la dee da dee da And now I'm here and you will see. la dee da dee da And a one, and a two, and a one. Let's do the second part of the number. And Was I involved? Absolutely not. You don't rewrite Beckett, and I told you all that. Godot you know, has to arrive before the last act. All right, that way you have a chance to develop the relationship between the characters. We need a more feminine voice on this project in order to make it work, Tom. You'll, you're turning this into a musical. That's gay. Shall we go? Look, I don't understand why Godot has to be gay. Now listen, Ian, just work with me on this. It's all in the text. In the original Godot, Godot didn't arrive because he couldn't confront his sexuality. Here, he arrives. Godot is finally coming out of the closet. Just work with me on this. In all fairness, it was Tom who inspired the gay Godot idea. Well, you know, the Beckett people got tipped off. Of course the Beckett estate is all run by men. So when they found out it was a woman directing a highly controversial postmodernist production, they attacked and ruined my directing career. Of course, if Tom hadn't tipped off the Beckett estate, they never would have known. Did she say that I tipped off the Beckett people? Oh, God, that's one of her favorite accusations. That I tipped off the Beckett people because uh, I wasn't involved. Yet uh, I was involved enough to create this absurd idea of turning Godot into a gay singing mime. He's such a jerk. She's such a jerk. So things haven't worked out exactly as we all hoped, but my company, Chabav, has been extremely successful. Miss Lawton, he's gone. Oh, thank God. Okay. So, let's go. Anyway, you know, I don't like doing business here. I have a lot of graft, a lot of corruption. And I refuse to be a part of it. So through my own hard work, and my own decency for that matter, I've made a lot of money. I went ahead and I hired a staff. I mean, this is Marquetta. She's my new assistant. She's very young, very lovely. Thank you. Um, okay, Red, just, just a minute, Marquetta. Okay, cut! Uh, no, Marquetta, what is no, no, wrong no. with this Keep picture? it rolling. Keep it rolling. Please? What is wrong with this picture? Keep it rolling. Don't cut it. I don't know. This is sugar. Okay, I've told you once. I have told you a thousand times. I don't eat sugar. Where is my fucking sweet and low? I'm sorry, Miss Lawton. We've run out. Okay, you know what? Just never mind. Never mind. Just... Marquetta, dear, what is that shirt you're wearing? <laughs> it was my mother's. Oh, okay. I'm sure she's lovely, but it's tacky. And this is a professional business. You look loose. Just get rid of it. Okay? Yes, Miss Lawden. Thank you. I read. Oh, so this is my office. It's beautiful. Lucy? Oh. Here. Name, well, Gustav, please. Gustav, I can't just sign anything. For you know. money, for money. Oh, okay. Well, money's always good, isn't it? This is Gustav. He has been a big addition to this company. He really knows how to get things done. Well, he used to be in this club called the STB. It was kind of like the KGB, but it was for checks. Anyway, poor thing, after the revolution, lost his job, and so he was available, and we hired him. 
He really knows everybody. Even uh, President Havel. <laughs> he knows lots of Havel? Yeah, they met when they were in prison. Gustav was in prison with Havel? No, I didn't say that. I, you know what? Okay, I am not working with criminals here. I want to get that on the record right now. We are completely above board here at Chabad. Around the third or fourth year, what we call Prague Delusional Reality Syndrome begins to take hold. And one manifestation of this illness is that the expatriated individual begins to create a reality that is comfortable and pleasant, but absolutely imaginary. I, want, I wanted you to meet Sylvan. This is Sylvan. She is sort of the den mother of our coffee clutch here. She's a great organizer. Um, this is Frida. Frida here in the middle. She's not a great speaker of English, so... Um. Hey, Hector! What did I say about cornflakes before dinner? Symptoms of PDRS include paranoia, sloth, gas, debauchery, sexual fascism, and annihilation. Well, the only effective treatment is emigration or return to the native country. Unfortunately, the very nature of the disease prevents its victims from seeking the necessary treatment to, to save their lives. Look, I can't leave Prague. I couldn't leave if I wanted to. They won't let me out of here. Besides, my audience is here. They need me. May I one? Yeah, you want one? Yeah. Hey, man. To wait. Up in the one. The one. The one. The one, yeah. Thank you. Hey, thank you, man. <laughs> the victim develops an iron curtain complex. Um, he longs to return to the native culture but believes he's being held captive in Prague. Literally, he believes there's no way out. I hate Prague. It's full of whores and crass consumerism. Vaclav Havel is completely sold out. Why don't you leave? Well, I want to, but I can't. They don't let you out of here. Anyway, I'm doing some really crucial work. Like what? Like my all-female rock band, Leaky Gash. The Gash rocks. <laughs> So are you involved in any other projects? If you mean theater, no, I don't do theater anymore. You know, there's not a single good actor in Prague, not one who speaks English anyway. Excuse me. See, that's a perfect example. That guy is a pervert. Did you see the way he was looking at me? He just wants me for my body. He's just like all the other men in Prague. They're all perverts and psychopaths. Pornography and sexism are rampant in Prague, and that's why Leaky Gash is so important. We're not just a band. It's a revolution. Yeah, fuck off, you too, buddy. Gash is not just a band. It's a revolution. It's about change. It's a message. Cells are already in operation. Demonstrations are being organized. This movement is going to spread all over the former Eastern Bloc and make Lenin and his Bolsheviks look like amateurs. How's it being funded? Investors. Brave women who want change. You, I need you on this one. No. Just this one last time. No, I said no, Hank. Last time's last time. That's it. I wouldn't be coming to you if I didn't need the best, and you're the only one who can do it. No way. You owe the money is really good on this one. How much? All right. 
Ziki Gash does need a new amp, so I'll do it one last time, but this is really it. Okay. Okay, good. No, this is the last... I swear, this is the last time. People have to be willing to sacrifice to do whatever it takes to get their message out there. I'm one of those people. Do you know that Ian's leaving the city? Ian? He is not. I'd know about it. Yeah, he's planning some type of farewell defenestration. Maybe you should take a look at that poster behind you. If you look in the dictionary for defenestration, it's defined as the act of throwing a thing, or especially a person, out of a window. Especially the defenestration of the city councillors in Prague. Sweetie, wake up. Where's you all? I don't have a lot of time. I'm being followed. Really? Is it cute? Tom, I'm being serious. Oh, here she is. Hi, you all. Oh, you look interesting. You all, it's great to see you. Tom, shut up. We're here because Ian needs us. You expect us to believe that Ian is going to kill himself. Yule, that is a little bit out there, even for you. Two vodkas, please. Are one of those for me? Three. He's devising a farewell piece about defenestration. In the final scene, he hurls himself from a tower. That's absurd. How do you know all this anyway? I snuck into his place. Oh. Uh. We have to get him out of the city or he will die. There's a 10.58 train to Frankfurt, Germany every morning. If we can get him to Frankfurt, he can get an airplane from there. How do you know that? Have you ever been there? No, but I've heard that if you can make it to Frankfurt, you can make it all the way home. That could be bullshit, Yule. You don't know what's happening. Yule, I just think it's a bit much to ask us to go. He's gonna die, Lucy. Do you care about that? He's a mime. He'll be fine. Look, his only chance is if we get him to Frankfurt. I take him myself, but I'm involved with some serious groundbreaking work right now. You mean your new video dubbing career? <sighs> Oh. 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 I ain't never had a big black cock before. Oh. Well, you got one now, baby. Oh. You gonna tell all your friends? Oh. No, I'm gonna keep it to myself. Oh. Oh. Right on, Yule. <laughs> Have you heard about the old Quran? Yeah, of course I have. That's what my book's about. Have you read it? No. But Ian has. The old crone speaks. Crone, old crone, here is thy request. The blood of bone, thy servant's best. Hey, that's from my text. I wrote that. Mm. It's a plea to the crone, the ancient soul of the city, to appear and bring us deliverance. Well, the crone's appeared to Ian. He's being directed by her, taking orders from her. You're here. I, I thought you weren't coming. Did, did you bring it? That's where it happened. What? Defenestration. Oh, oh, he's gone now.
nuts. No, Lucy, he hasn't gone nuts. Genius is always disguised as insanity. Ian's the one. <sighs> Ian is the pilgrim deliverer who's gonna get us out of here. Ian, what a coincidence. Well, I live right over there. Look, there's Marcel Marceau. What? Lucy! Oh, oh god damn, Lucy, what do you got in there? No private business records. So his bank accounts, whatnot. There's the train. Step up, step up. Dan, Prosim, Yedno Kopi, Milku, Prosim, DK. Hi, you. I have some wonderful news. Wait a second, I'll be right back. Dudley's do dickle. Okay, Hank, but this is the last time. Of course it is, baby. Don't forget to be there at 11. I saw him today morning. Today? Yeah. It will be very nice action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you go? It's today? Mm -hmm. At the tower? In the afternoon? Mm -hmm. Let's go! Bye! Bite that lollipop! Chomp it off! Bite that lollipop! Bite it! Bite it! Bite it! Bite it! He's back. Tom? What? He's back? Yule, I can't get into my apartment. There are cops everywhere. 
They've got Gustav. I mean, I'm screwed. My business is screwed. What? He's back? Today? Mask on? I haven't seen any mimes. Hey, aren't you the gay Godot guy? No, I got somebody else. Tom, Tom, have you seen him? No. There's the on! <laughs> it's supposed to be very nice next time, huh? Oh, okay. don't do it, Sporty! Think of your mother! She loves you! Academic shit ain't gonna fly. This is real life shit here. Ian, listen, man. You're the one. All right, I know you're the one. You know you're the one. He's 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 the one. I am not the one. I am just a simple mime. You're... He is gone! He is on different astray! I'm sick of this shit! Let's go get his ass! Yeah! Attention! Attention! All experts! There's three beer and coolers at Pod La Pub! I repeat! Three beer and coolers! Just catch the 1058 train to Frankfurt. No free beers. Free gulas. Hey. No free beer here. What do you guys want to do? Let's go and defenestrate those arseholes. Come on! Yeah. Oh. Yeah.
Gracias. You didn't forget about the dubbing, did you? You ready for that lollipop? Oh my god. Okay, uh, th this way's blocked, guys. Let's uh, move it back. Yep. yep. Tom. It's Tom. Oh. Tom! 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 Hi, Tommy. Hi. Um, what, what's your name again? Tom! Yeah. Yeah. We have eight minutes to get to this train. We've got to go. Come on. Hollywood of Europe. Hollywood directors are clamoring to work on location in beautiful Prague. It's quickly become the movie capital of Europe. Recent Hollywood stars that have made their movies here include Sean Connery, Bruce Willis, Tom Cruise, Matt Damon, and Bob Denver. And they all give Prague the thumbs up. Way to go, comrade. Oh, I've been back for almost two years. No, more than two years. Almost three years. I was in Canada for about 18 months in Vancouver. I was working with a street circus for a while. I went back to LA where I'm from, but you know, I hate Hollywood. Well, I made it back to New York and New York is a city I have always wanted to conquer, so you know, with my job experience and my business credentials, I had no trouble getting a job in one of the top 67 Wall Street firms. It was pretty good. It was good being home. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> after about eight months, my mom asked me to move out, so I had to go up to New York and get some, get some work. 
I'm a different kind of artist now. I've, I've taken off the mask and incorporated the spoken word. I'm more of an actor, really, now. And I've had a lot of interesting roles. I did a lot of temp jobs. Um, I'm really good at phones, so uh, I got loads of reception gigs. But I heard you got fired. Well, fired? <laughs> I... Okay, well, I mean, I, I think it was a mutual agreement. Certainly it wasn't based on any lack of job performance. It was just, it was a major cultural difference. I mean, you know, okay, I love America, but I think Americans can be extremely uptight. And, you know, for example, if you show up at work even slightly late, 45, 50 minutes, you get horrible looks. As if you have to be in your office, at your desk to be working. So I had completely outgrown that idea, you know, and not to mention you cannot smoke inside or anywhere in the city for that matter. And of course, if you have one or two drinks at lunch, you're immediately considered an alcoholic and you're either asked to leave, as was my case, or you have to immediately join the company's 12-step alcoholic recovery program. And at that point, I just said, it was time to go. A rexpat is a returning ex expatriate, a returning expat. An expat uh, has been here, he goes home, he or she goes home to America, goes to law school, takes a job, maybe does well, but can't get Prague out of his or her blood. I know of at least 500 such people. Most of them are very happy to be back and they've committed themselves permanently to the city. Well. What Levy calls rexpatriates are nothing more than expatriates who went home and simply couldn't make it. The failures in question return to Prague because the city allows them to live in a sort of perpetual adolescence. In my research, I discovered that something like 28% of all Prague expatriates who leave the city return within two years, a terrifying statistic. I'm a casting director now. I cast local actors on films that are being shot in Prague. Um, you mean Hollywood films? Some of them are American. On my last film, I was a radio operator. Uh, I didn't have to speak much in that at all, which was good because I had to wear these headphones and I had to operate the radio at the same time, which was difficult enough, as you can imagine. Um, but I have had plenty of speaking roles. Next one I have is in a film called Blowback. Um, I think these are a little big. Let's see, I cast uh, Blowback, Knock Off, uh, Under Dead, Under Dead 2, Heaven Hound, Crossbow Garden, Hollow Force, Hollow Force 2, Peoples and Randy. Um, let's see, did I say Blowback? I think I said Blowback. Uh, but Hollow, Hollow Force 2 was my favorite one. That, that was a lot of casting in that. Spacemen. I mean, here we did Puritans. The oatmeal guys, you know, like we had to do lots of oatmeal guys. Yeah, the spacemen were fun. They had really cool costumes. I did a lot of crucial work on that film. I've also been the unnamed GI, a uh, spice spa attendant. What else? Um, an onlooker, von Kahr functionary, and scabies patient, number two. I really wanted scabies patient number one. Oh no, but Ian, actually that scabies patient number two, that turned out to be a bigger role. Than, I mean, it had more screen time than scabies patient number one. The guy I mean, you cast sucked though. Well, I didn't cast him. They cast him out of England eventually. Yeah. But you, no, you were a really good scabies patient and you're going to be a great oatmeal guy too. And you're a great casting director. <laughs> Thank you. You are. <laughs> Yes, I do. I have a new business, and uh, in fact, I'm waiting for some new clients right now, and uh, they should so be So selfish, and I won't... Hi, I'm... This is Tim, and I'm Hi, Steve. Hi, Tim. Lucy Loden. Steve, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Well, great. So, let's go on in. I'll show you the place. Yeah? about you. Now what brings you to Prague again? Well, I'm an accountant. Oh. He didn't make partner, so we got transferred here. Of course, I had to give up my own business as well. Uh. What's the name of your company again? We are Prague Luxuries with an American face. Or PLAF for short. 
That's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, I thought we'd be mixed into some kind of communist wilderness <laughs> here. <laughs> well, we like to think of PLAF as a bubble padding between you and the frightening Czech culture. We cushion your experience. Stephen, I told you this would be okay. When this first happened to us, we were both a little nervous. Right. Stephen's got the heart of an artist. He's very oh. sensitive. Well, don't worry. You're with PLAF now. Now, your television will be programmed so that only English-speaking channels will come through, and you simply will not be confronted with Czech language in the privacy of your own home. Also, every Thursday, you'll be given an order form so you can order whatever you need from the United States. <sighs> Nutrisweet, Starbucks coffee beans, clam chowder, I mean, cheeses. <clears throat> They're things you will be wanting, and we can get them for you. What about fat-free foods? I can get fat-free foods. What about Mexican or Indian? Sometimes we like to go ethnic. Well, I can do that too. In fact, just last week, I sent my assistant over to New York to get Taco Bell for Johnny Depp, who's back in town filming Blowback. It cost him $8,000, but I'm sure we can find a much more economical solution for you. Johnny Depp, aren't you exciting? Yeah. yeah. Well. I hear his family. <laughs> one night in New York, I was sitting in a bar after work, and I had this revelation. It's like whatever. And he's talking. See, actually, I'm a poet. Yeah. I lived in Prague for three years. Prague? Mm. Oh. Where is that, New Jersey? And it hit me. I gotta go back. I don't even know why I left in the first place. Ciao, Klutze. Jakob puts him. My boy. <laughs> we decided to move out to Rye. That means, that means paradise and shit. I thought him. Ciao, boy. Would pass him as a special on the road, yeah? No, Bill Dubre. Oh. Pohodja? Pohodja. Then he's out. He's out. Hi, Ciao. Ciao. That's Tonda. He's my brother in law. He's a good guy. My check's gotten a lot better since I come out here. Oh yeah? What do you say? Oh, you just thank me for all the work I've been doing. Ciao, Las Moya. How long do you plan on staying? I live here. I have no plans of leaving. What we call in the literature normalization is a horribly sad form of cultural codependency. The expatriate has an effect given up, and he no longer entertains the idea of returning to his native culture and progressing with his life in a healthy way. On the surface, the expatriate looks normal, but underneath there's a cauldron of emotional disease and conflict that's not dealt with and completely neglected. The long-term effects of this process still remain to be seen. Yeah, I'm aware of Gardner's work. She says this is one permanent vacation and it's a one big adolescent playground. Well, what interests me isn't her work, God knows, but the fact that she's been around Prague for nearly a decade. Why, she's one of the oldest living expatriates in Prague, except for me. Yeah, I, I do live in Prague, but I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing research for a doctoral thesis. It's, um, it's outstanding work. So, I'll, I'll stay here until I get the job done.
Well, we would talk about life And we would drink all night Watch the sun coming up over Latin And everything, it seems so right And then you, you wake up at 2.30 Every fucking day You waste your time hungover But it doesn't matter anyway You say, maybe I'll paint a picture or Maybe I'll write my thoughts down But then you see the price on the lease stick And they got beer for just 12 crowns here Well, maybe I'll just have another Maybe some Becker too The next thing you know you're drunk again And everybody's laughing at you Hey, it just don't matter anymore Said I, just what you came here looking for if you can't find it over there Don't come here thinking Somebody give it to you here Some come here for answers And some come here to hide Some come to see the checks Now that they're on our side They, they hear about new freedom the, the new Paris of the 20s Well, my advice to all these people Stay home and save your fucking money because we have no great art masters here. Not even decent wine. We sure don't have no answers. We do have fun sometimes, but if you're in need of help to get your dull life off the shelf, well, don't blame Prague when it don't happen. Because when you came to Prague, you brought yourself. Oh, yeah. So did I. Here's a typical day, you start drinking just about noon by 4 a.m. I'll be trying to shag you in a herna bathroom, wanna find out about you real soon. Was it me that gave you that rush, or just the wine that made you blush? The wine that made the talking easy, the wine that made the sex so pleasing. On the Charles Bridge being lewd, fucking up the tourist view. With the people I can't forget, with those people I'm lucky I met.